With the end of the war, one of the top British war secrets is now revealed. The secret of the oil and gasoline pipeline that fed the vast mechanized force across the channel. To begin with, the pipeline ran from Liverpool to the Channel Coast. But when the invasion was planned, it was realized something far larger was necessary if fuel was to arrive on the continent swiftly enough and in sufficient quantities. The first experiment was with a lead cable, seven and one half centimeters in diameter. It was covered with tar and then with wire and then with a second coating of tar. was sunk in the Bristol Channel for a test. But for Normandy, it was not lead, it was steel they used. Six meter lengths of steel pipe were welded together. Now each pipe is a thousand meters long. It is as flexible as rubber. It is turned on giant reels. This is steel piping, which is not swept away by tides and which resists the corrosive effect of salt water. With the invading armies, these ships went, and from the enormous reels wound out the pipe into the sea, from England all the way to France. Invasion. And behind the troops, behind the trucks, the jeeps, the tanks, the half-tracks, came the fuel, the oil and gasoline. And so, no matter how far they drove, there was never a fuel shortage for the Allied armies. Each of these drums weighed 1,600 tons and carried 70 miles of pipe. They were made hollow for buoyancy. Across France, across Belgium, and back near Dover, in what seemed to be golf clubs, ice cream factories, and innocent seaside villas, all camouflaged against German air attacks, were the pumping stations. The pumps worked, pumping the lifeblood of the armies from the great British system into the new system in liberated Europe. guarded against sabotage. The flow never stopped. Neither did the armies. With such a vast supply system behind them, the final defeat of the Wehrmacht was, from the first, inevitable. <laughs> <laughs> 